This video is brought to you by Ace of Twelve Productions. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to enjoy the videos. Also, please try and comment and rate the videos. Thank you. Hey guys, Ace of here and welcome to JavaScript tutorial number six. Um, so might as well jump straight into it. Uh, just a basic HTML page with all the usual tags. Uh, script tag, of course, as well. Te type equals text slash JavaScript. Um, and in this tutorial, we're just going to be covering functions. So, um, what is a function? Well, a function is something something that does something for us. Uh, and while you may be thinking, well, why don't I just type out? Uh, why don't I just type out all the stuff that would normally be in a function, and then just keep repeating that? Well, you can do that. That's that's a hard way. But uh, making a function allows you to continuously call a function when, whenever you want inside your code, and you don't have to keep retyping out all the stuff you wanted to do. Okay, so the basic setup of a function is you type the keyword function to tell JavaScript you're making a function, then you type the function name, then two parentheses, and inside the parentheses you can have parameters, which I'll talk about later, then the curly braces, then the code to be executed, and again, another optional return statement, which I'll also talk about later. So, uh, now we understand that, let's try making our first function. All you got to do is type function again, so I've typed function here, then I've given it a name of print hello, and two parentheses, no parameters, but even though I've got no parameters, I still have to type out the parentheses. Okay, and then the curly braces. And very simple function here. All I'm doing is document dot writing hello. And um, basically, say I was uh, in my program, I was constantly printing out hello all throughout the program. Rather than writing document dot write uh, and then hello, this is a lot heftier than doing this. And that takes me on to uh, the next bit I wanted to talk about, and that's calling a function. To call a function, you just type out its name and then the two parentheses, and if you add any parameters, you just type in the uh, the variables you want to pass inside the parentheses, okay? And of course, semicolon. So basically, calling this function is exactly the same as document.writeHelloBR, okay? It's exactly the same. And that just completely shortens our code. And we can then go around typing print hello, uh, calling the function anywhere we want, and it's a lot quicker than typing all this out, okay? Um, so let's test that quickly. Uh, oops. Okay, there we go. We press F5. It prints out hello. Okay, and does exactly what we expected it to. Also, it prints out the line break, but you can't see that yet because nothing's after it. But it does print out a line break. Um, okay, so that's a very simple function. Moving on, we're going to look at a function with uh, parameters. And whoops, this function is exactly the same as the previous function. Apart from a, a couple of tiny things, uh, rather than document dot writing, we're alerting, okay, and we're alerting a state, uh, we're alerting a variable, sorry, as opposed to a string literal like we were here. But the main thing we want to be looking at here is that we've actually got a parameter here. If we if we go back up, uh, we see we can actually have parameters in between the parentheses. And what is a parameter? Well, basically, it's something that's required by a function, okay? So this function requires um, one parameter, and that parameter has a name statement, okay? When I, when I type this out, this is exactly the same as typing var statement, okay? So, uh, except we can't use the keyword var in, in when we declare them in, the, uh, in between the parentheses. So, what this does is says this function called print statement requires one um, one value to be passed to it, and that value will then be placed inside the variable called statement. And then what we're doing is we're alerting the value inside that variable called statement. So to call this, all we have to do is again type out the name of the function, type the parentheses, and then we have to type type out um, either a variable name or a string literal or a number. Um, which will will then take that value and put it inside this statement variable. Uh, to help describe this, think about okay, you've got a variable called statement and it's unassigned, so it's null. 
I uh, can't do that actually, can I? Uh, and all we're doing when we call the function is we're defining, whoops, we're defining the variable statement equals, uh, so let's take this example here. So what's happening is uh, um, when we call this statement, it uh, when we call this function, sorry, the function creates uh, a variable called statement. And then it takes um, the value you passed in between these parentheses and puts it that value inside the statement, much like we're doing here. See, when the uh, function is called, we create the variable statement, and then we take uh, the variable between the parentheses from the call and place it inside that variable statement here, like we're doing here. Okay, so that just uh, hopefully helps to describe what's happening here. Um, moving on, we're going to be doing something a tiny bit more advanced uh, now. What we're going to be doing is, again, this is pretty much exactly the same as uh, the previous statement, apart from we're not actually outputting anything. Uh, we're creating a variable inside the function, uh, which I'll talk about in a sec, what happens when you do that. And finally, the key thing is we're using the return statement. In all the others, we haven't used the return statement. We've used parameters, but we haven't used the return statement, which is the final thing, excuse me, the final thing we can uh, we can uh, put in a function. So basically, let's take a look at what's happening here. The function is called find prod, and it requires uh, two parameters. Oh, by the way, before I move on, this thing here in the function definition, this is called the function definition. When we define the, uh, sorry, actually, this is called the function definition here the code I've highlighted. Everything in between the uh, curly braces is the function definition. This is actually the function header. Uh, and the function header it consists of the function name and its parameter list. Now, in the function header, everything between the parentheses uh, is called a parameter. But when we actually come to calling that function here, this isn't called a parameter. It's called an argument. So when we call the function, we give it arguments, and um, uh, when uh, when we create the function, we give it a list of parameters. We write out a list of parameters. So remember, just that's that's a. It's not hugely um, important. I mean, when you're talking to a programmer, though, he'll he will say parameters and arguments. So. You, you should be expected to know what that means. So remember, in the function header, they're called parameters. In the uh, in the calling of the function, they're called arguments. Okay. Now moving on, we've got two parameters here again, and um, x and y. And here we're creating a variable z uh, and assigning it a value of x times y. Okay. Now, uh, and sorry again, and finally we're returning z, so we're returning the value of z which will be x times y. Okay, so what does returning do? Well basically what what returning does is here we've got this this small example we're creating a variable called z and there is a slight clash there, I'm going to talk about it in a sec and we're assigning it a value of find prod 2 3 okay so what's happening is we're passing two arguments here two and three and then inside the function it's going to create a variable called z and assign z the value of two times three so z now contains a value of six and finally we're returning z so we're returning six and what's going to happen is um, six will then be assigned into this z okay um, 